What's up, everybody? It's the Hardy Construction. You can find us at hardyconstruction.tumblr.com, youtube.com slash hardyconstruction, well, facebook.com slash the Hardy Construction with the O's comp, and what did uh, I say? Uh, it's Hilo from Battlestar Galactica. Today's film is uh, Trick or Treat 2007. Trick or Treat 2007, directed and written by Michael Doherty, starring Anna Paquin, Brian Cox, and Dylan Baker. Cox. <laughs> Five interwoven stories that occur on Halloween. Uh oh, here's uh, the long uh, explanation by IMDb. An everyday high school principal has a secret life as a serial killer. A college version might have just met the guy for her. A group of teenagers pull a mean prank. A woman who loathes the night has to contend with her holiday obsessed husband, and a mean old man meets his match with the demonic supernatural trick or treater. What? Ooh. Okay, this guy sp- not only spoiled the movie but over explained it. He could have just said it's five <laughs> horror stories, an anthology within uh, link- interlinking. Whatever, who cares? Anyway, so this yeah. is a film by the director Michael Doherty. Why did I pick it? Because it's Halloween. There you go, because it's near hey, Halloween. Good We're explanation. In Michael Doherty is a director well, of. Well, it's not films. Halloween, it's October. Very good. That's what I said five seconds before. Dire- he's uh. a director of uh, Krampus, a movie we did around uh, Christmas time, which is a very fun but f- easily forgettable film that had good art design to it. Very interesting art design. I remember kind of not caring about it, but whatever. Right. Uh, uh, great puppets, monsters in it, but it's not really a This is a, definitely a, a better film. movie. This is a very a much more improvement, but obviously it took place before that one. <laughs> so uh, he sort of lost it. And now he's going to do the sequel to Godzilla. He's going to do Godzilla King of Monsters, so... I'll be sure not to watch that movie either. Hey, it so, might be good. Yeah, but he's going to be wasting his art talents on Godzilla. Like, Godzilla is just Godzilla. Like, I've, I've been watching the Godzilla from Japan. The yeah, Shin but maybe Godzilla. he'll have that guy, the little Sam trick-or-treater oh, yeah. creature, like, pop out of Godzilla. And That'd it'll be, be like Mothra. I don't know. Apparently, the American Godzilla it took an hour before Godzilla came out to destroy uh, whatever state he was in while in the Japanese Shin Godzilla was out within 15 minutes destroying shit so that shows you the difference of Godzilla movies in Japan and America because they have to make this whole even even the one from you like the one that had Matthew Broderick right from back then no I don't like it oh I you didn't remember it no. that was basically aping it was almost like a mix of um, Independence Day you know those directors those yeah. guys that directed that Independence Day meeting Jurassic Park and it was like a terrible movie What's the I remember, deal with Matthew Broderick? I don't really like him. He he drove a car into a uh, into a woman and her mother yeah, he killed and killed someone. them both. He got no trouble, right? So there you go. And he's married to Sarah Jessica Parker. So he paid only a oh. fine for killing two people by driving on the well, side. Well, he paid a bigger either. fine by being married to Sarah Jessica Parker. Oof, that's a rough one. I remember watch. I meant the joke, not Sarah Jessica Parker. I remember watching <laughs> a, a very similar. There's a Woody Allen movie at the very end of it where he's driving mm-hmm. a car in England. And he's driving down the wrong side of the road. He's like a character throughout the whole film. And uh-huh. he gets into a car accident and kills himself at the end by mistake by doing that. And then he's like in hell or purgatory. And he's like, oh, I can't believe I drove on the, the wrong... movie for me. He's like, I can't believe I drove on the wrong side of the road. And the... However he talks. And I was, Are I you making was... fun of Jews? No, I was doing an impersonation of Woody Allen. Woody Allen's Jewish? How dare. I don't believe it. So Michael Doherty does this film, Trick or Treat. Got him... Um, I heard a, a lot about this film. Actually, a lot of people talk about this positively, and I, understandably so. It is, for what it is, it's a, a sort of interwoven anthology film, and I actually think it's really well done for what it is. I, I yeah. think it could have been, I dare say, a Halloween classic. If uh, and surprise, I'm just going to be surprised what I'm going to say, but it'd be yeah. a, a classic if they actually cut out the tits in this movie. Really. I think if they had cut out the breasts cut in this film, and I don't mean it, I don't, and I don't mean it in the way that I get turned on by watching women's breasts get cut off. <laughs> I just, <hate laughs> people. I meant that they actually just get rid of the breasts in the film. Why you know, would people, they ever? No, <laughs> because that's then they could never the solution. Then the film could have been like PG thirteen, and then they would be able to show it to more people. Do I you think understand that, what you're saying? <laughs> I, listen, I love breasts in film. I love them. I love it. All right, what movie am I referencing? <laughs> Naked Gun 2. All right, so... Um, no. <laughs> what? Yeah, when he's saying the key word. Yes, and, like, that's what I was just keep saying it and they can't get out because they're eating pistachios and they're trapped in a truck or something. Yeah, that's the Oh, no, no, another I mean. truck backs... Whatever, anyway, go on. So uh, this film, I think it could have been... It's still popular and it's a lot of people, but I think it may, might have suffered 
Uh, you know, a lot of not a lot of people get to see it because there was like breast. I remember watching at the beginning when the guy's turning on a porno film and you see a girl's breast. I was like, whoa! I was like, oh, it's weird. It like that. I don't know how I haven't seen this. I've heard of it before, but it's good. And uh, yeah, and uh, and it's not a gory film. You know, it's not vi- well. It is there is a certain a very explicit gore of a child getting murdered with his head decapitated. That so is I guess nice. that's probably the most <laughs> the most disgusting part of that. Uh, well, so this there's film, wolves. There's people ripping off their skin and becoming werewolves. So this film is uh, produced actually by J.J. Abrams, <laughs> and uh, he uh, obviously is the director of Episode Seven and Episode Nine of the Star Wars franchise. You know, it's funny the Star Wars Episode Nine that's going to come out. It was actually mm-hmm. going to be directed by this guy who did the Jurassic World, which made like I think half a billion dollars. But yeah. um, he, I guess, he must have been so fucking like annoying that because marvel does uh, not marvel disney doesn't take shit from anybody they're like you have to make the movies their way or they'll tell you to go fuck off because that's what happened with the han solo movie yeah and then they got rid of the director like the last scene or something and like made a new one right they also did it to the original director of rogue one so like disney does not fuck around because the director of rogue one had done the fantastic four uh reboot and oh, apparently God. he was a real piece of shit of a person. Well, no I don't fucking know him, shit. Look at that movie. So there you go. Don't fuck around with Marvel they'll, or, or Disney. They'll they'll fuck you right in the ass and kick you right out. So anyway, so J.J. Abrams, that he he did that as well as another producer, <laughs> Brian Singer. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I laugh at Brian Singer, right? Yeah, I know why. <laughs> it's so funny because you don't. You know what? what hey, what's I, diff- is that how Rogue got in on this? Yeah, you know did- that makes sense. I guess that could make sense. Yeah, right. Um, uh, Brian Singers, he's known for his twink parties. It's not offensive to say twink, right? No, he's like a pedophile, though, right? Well, he he likes young the younger men that look like 17, 16 years but old. But isn't he like an actual pedophile? Or am I, I, I don't think that's ever been proven. Like, I don't, listen, I'm not here to <laughs> to, to uh, defend this man because I've never. But I've heard he's like he's he has those parties where the guys are like. Well, that's look. all well and good, but I think he's like an actual pedophile. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I, I yeah, think I, don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's that. I think that he's just—it's very questionable what his shit is. I think there was somebody that brought up those charges, yeah. So there might be, but you know, you know, you know, Hollywood rules. We just we just heard one big fatso that got in trouble for all his shit. So imagine this guy. Who knows what he's up to? But the thing is, like, yeah. uh, I remember one of the funniest things is that there's like a photo of him at a Halloween party. And he's dressed up <laughs> as a priest. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> it's just so fucking funny. And that was a like, bad choice. There's like photos of him hanging out with um, uh, Kevin Spacey, and you know how Kevin Spacey's like a closeted guy, a gay guy. But Kevin Spacey's oh, I didn't awesome. Know that. So I hope Kevin Spacey's not fucking young guys. Well, no, I mean I hope he is, but legal young guys. Yeah, uh, right. very good. So yeah, I just wanted to make pedophilia jokes. So Trick or Treat is this film. Uh, <laughs> it does star Anna Paquin. It's so funny because he's it, this. It stars some, so many people. It can't be only starring her. There's some pretty, Dylan, uh, Dylan Baker is the biggest character. Yeah, there. Dylan Baker. If anybody knows who he is, he's actually been in a lot of stuff. I knew him prominently from a film. He sort of looks like a regular uh, Caucasian, a, a Caucasian male actor, blue eyes, dark brown hair. He sort he's of great like, in the movie Happiness. Yes, that's when I first saw him, and I was like, wow, he's great at playing a complete creep, because he plays, like, a, a guy who looks mild-mannered, but is absolutely a creep, and he's a super creep in, in uh, happiness, because uh, there's a great scene where he's, like, he's a child molester, and he's, like, a child rapist. It, that movie is, and like, I don't mean the so great scene is him disturbing. raping kids, I'm saying the part where he, um, his, his son doesn't have a connection. Don't, don't, don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Oh, please. So the son doesn't have a connection with his dad, and then he says, would you ever fuck me? And he goes, no, I'd I'd rather jerk off. And I was like, holy lord, what a movie. <laughs> Remember that? And then he like he's in a car and he's jerking off to Teen Bop magazine to young yeah, boys. It's what really a creepy. What, what a, a disturbing movie. A very disturbing movie. So Dylan Baker's in this film. He's playing a, a weirdo. But let's see how this, uh, this film actually starts off with a couple, right? A couple of... Uh, um, in their Hilo from late uh, 20s. from Battlestar Galactica and his wife. Who's Hilo? He's the one that's the couple. He's in the couple. Okay, I don't know. I never saw Battlestar. Um, so anyway, he he's there with his wife. The wife is obviously the she's the reporter from the Marvel films. If you've ever seen Iron Man one, the one that Tony Stark fucks around. Oh, okay. With a lot. She's uh, been in a lot of stuff. She's one of those actors where you see her and everything, and then you just forget what she's from. But uh, right. she's fun. She's playing a, a woman that does not like Halloween, so obviously, you know, she's doomed from the beginning. But she's and, in a cool uh, outfit. She's wearing an awesome outfit from, from uh, 
I think it's Osimo from. Um, oh, I thought it was just some random robot. Is it? That'd be uh, maybe awesome it's a if random robot. Maybe it's. Oh, maybe it's like. Uh, I don't know. One of these sh- old shows I don't watch, but anyway. I will. I will give this. I like that the way that the film plays with time, and no, it's, it's not sort Osimo. of Osimo's cardboard. Never mind. My my apologies. I like how the film is uh, plays around with time. Like every every story is interlocked, and you figure out you have in, in your head you have to figure out when it takes place. You know what kind of. Uh, yeah. Order everything goes through, but I thought it was it was fun. It was nice, and uh, we introduced. Sounds scary. It is. Uh, it almost seems like there's a big New Orleans sort of Halloween pre- um, celebration in the middle of some everywhere town. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know where this town is supposed to take place. Does it? Do you have the uh, uh, um, information of where it's about? It? But it's, it look. seems like a it seems like a regular sort of little town. I never see scenes like this of Halloween in any places at all. I don't know how vibrant it gets in places. I remember when I went to Arizona. And uh, mm-hmm. Arizona is boring as shit where I went. And then I went to Phoenix. And it was like, a, I guess it was around the era of um, some football games going on. And uh-huh. it was like, it looked like this movie. Like, I couldn't believe Like, it was just white people dancing in the streets. When and, like, I was a kid, my town used to get pretty crazy, actually. Oh, in Long, like Long Island and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, not like this crazy, but there was a lot of trick-or-treaters. There weren't guys dressed up as vampires killing women and leaving them on the... Uh, porches and stuff like that i mean that's not on halloween <laughs> we do that during christmas season oh uh, okay. this was filmed in vancouver so let's oh, say okay, it was Canada. in vancouver yeah they, they don't have to do that we'll ask thea later but um anyway so yeah so it was kind of crazy in in uh getting back to phoenix it was like girls that were dressed up in jerseys like hot chicks and they actually come up to you and tell you that you're hot and i was like eh, how come i i'm like a invisible ghost in new york city oh well so yeah the whole deal is that this is one Halloween night, um, I guess in 2007, and uh, we're, we're, we see that first scene where the girl, the woman is murdered um, by, I guess it's Sam, the, uh, yeah. This, what, how would you describe what the fuck Sam looks like? He's like a jack-o'-lantern demon. Yeah, he's dressed up like a little scarecrow, but he has a jack-o'-lantern head and underneath. I wish they wouldn't have taken his mask off, but I guess that it was necessary for the film. I like when they shot him and Pumpkin Pulp came out. Yeah, that was cool. It was so funny th- seeing... Go what? ahead. No, I was going to say, do you think if you ate, if you roasted the seeds that came out of him, you would be possessed? I've never had pumpkin... I don't know if I've ever had pumpkin seeds. Are they good? Yeah, what? Yeah, because I've eaten pumpkin. I, I don't know. I've had pumpkin, but I don't think I've ever eaten pumpkin seeds. Yo, that's the whole fun of making jack o lanterns You get to roast all the seeds. Yeah, I remember cutting open pumpkins way back when I was a kid when people gave a shit about Halloween. And I remember finding it disgusting. I like, gave I, a I shit remember. about Halloween. Yeah, sure. So uh, it also leads to this uh, Anna Paquin's in a scene. And it was so weird because when I saw these women, uh, there's like a hot woman dressed up as Cinderella. Um, I forget who all these these other women, like Little Bo Peep. And then this other woman's dressed up like Snow White. And uh, Anna Paquin's dressed up as uh, Little Red Riding Hood. And I'm watching it go and I was like, this is a coven of witches or or something. I knew as soon as I saw them, I was like, these are, because you know how these movies always have... Every anthology film has to have some sort of shitty switcheroo in it, mm-hmm. and I thought, oh, these are a coven of witches. And all the, and then it kind of wavered in the middle of it. Their storyline when they, you know, they're in the party and stuff like that. Switcheroo. Well, they, you know, they try to shamalian it. They try to give you some sort of twist ending. Shamalian. <laughs> uh, and uh, we might as well just instead of jumping around from each story to story, we'll just go to this one. It, it was weird seeing Anna Paquin in this because anybody could have played Anna Paquin's character. I think it was just mm. for the fact that it's Anna Paquin. She's not a huge star anymore, but she's well, sort she of a notable rogue, star. You know, that's cool. Yeah, there's actually an X Men. I think X Men Three. Uh, not X Men Three. X Men. Uh, how many fucking X Men movies are X Men Five or X Men Four? Uh, there's Days a of lot Future. Of them. Days of Future Past. So that was yeah. like X Men Five or something. No, she that was, was the uh, that was the fourth one, but that was going with the other series also. No, so no, so it's the fifth one because it's it's following. Yeah, but the the other one, New Class, doesn't really. It's a different series. So it's, it's part two. It's then a pre, it's a prequel. So this is like, this is a merger between the original series and the new series. Right. So what, it's it's yeah. the second in the new trilogy, but it's the fourth in the old trilogy. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. So anyway, why I'm saying that is because they actually had a rogue cut where they added a half an hour of rogue scenes in the movie. It's all just her naked. They really fucked up her character in that movie too. Go oh boy, did they fuck those X Men movies up? I, I was not a fan of those. You like? Those I, movies, I right? like. I like the first. That's why you're one, insane. And the second one's okay. Uh. So anyway, um. So Anna Paquin's in this. Anybody could have like played the her. Ones. Like whatever. Go on. 
Anna Paquin is in this film and she's playing this little uh, Red Riding Hood. I, I, I don't think I even remember any of the characters' names besides that little monster man and the Sam. principal. Uh, right. Oh, and, uh, um, pr- uh, Principal Wilkins. Principal Wilkins. And uh, Anna. let's see who Anna Paquin's playing. Uh, she's like nowhere in the fucking uh, credits in IMDb. Anyway, so she's playing this sort of virginal girl. That's what they're uh, hinting, alluding to. And yeah. uh, what did you think of this particular storyline the the girl stalked by a vampire it seems so weird right like it doesn't seem like well i thought it was cool that the vampire was mr wilkins yeah i thought that too like i i, I felt bad i wasn't for... expecting that at all actually i sort of felt bad that his kid got <laughs> his now has no family but then i realized oh yeah his father was a piece of shit but yeah, his dad was a look... serial killer and his kid's probably gonna be one too so mr wilkins the principal obviously was uh pissed off at children uh, because uh, he's a principal and he must just want to get rid, rid of kids and he ended up killing the kid from Bad Santa. I was like, oh, that's the kid from Bad Santa. You know the kid with the curly blonde hair? I don't know if you've ever seen that film. i never seen it. You know what's uh, cool though is like the way he poisoned him and everything. Like I guess Yeah, that was an awesome graph. He's like the guy that people warn you about, you know? But let's get back to the, the Coven one because I think that's the weakest story of all the stories. Okay. Um, so Anna Paquin's running around and, and it almost seems like just to fatten up the film, the Anna Paquin stuff. Um, right. I liked it. it no, I thought okay. it was good. I thought it was good. I just felt that it was it was not really a fleshed out story. It was just sort of like let's see women in peril sort of thing. But that sort of thing was already happening with the kids that pranked that um, idiot savant character. Yeah. But um, uh, sh- I got to tell you this: Anna Paquin is smoking hot as a werewolf uh, when she's yeah. she's turning into a werewolf and she has that hot face. She's hotter than uh, the girl from, um, what's that movie, Ginger Snaps. You know when she's turning into a wolf? Not when she actually has that mm, weird monkey face. I don't know. I'm not saying actress-wise. Did she look hotter when she was turning into a werewolf in uh, Ginger Snaps? I, well, it's hard to say because I don't consider werewolves hot. Yeah, I don't, I'm not talking about the actual mu- fucking dog face. I'm talking about when they're, you know, <laughs> when they're hot. You know, when they have that animal sort of uh, look to them, the girls? Sure. All right, sure. very good. Yeah, hey, I want to fuck dogs. Very good. <laughs> Put that everywhere. Anyway, uh, so I knew... You like, heard once, it here, folks. You heard it here. Once, once that scene happened where they started killing all the guys at the party, because uh-huh. it's so funny how they... they, they um, She's this her sister, the Cinderella, is trying to call her, and her and Snow White's like, oh, you know, which guy did you leave for her? And you see this guy who, it looks like he's drunken and passed out next to the tree. Then you realize he's actually just dead or something. Right. And uh, I realized they pulled the old switcheroo that I've seen a lot of times before, with the sort of werewolf beats vampire sort of storyline where you're hunting somebody down and they're actually worse than you. I've this actually has been done before, and I can't think if it if it was Goosebumps. Or one of those R.L. Stein sort of horror shows. Mm. But the whole... I remember this specific episode of one of those shows. It was like a kid's sort of horror show. And right. it was about this... Um, I think they were adoptive parents. And they would mistreat this kid. And they're like, we're going to get you. We're going to get you. Because they were actually vampires. Right. And they, they chase him into the woods. And then at the end he goes... I'm a werewolf, and he actually turns to a werewolf and kills them. And that's Can how werewolves ends. kill vampires? I know this is a debate. I don't... I don't. I don't know. I think vampires would win because vampires are vampires all the time. Werewolves are only werewolves for like a fucking couple days or something, you know. Well, then the vampire has the shitty um, <laughs> the luck of running into a werewolf when it actually can change. Um, yeah, like if I was a vampire, I would just stay in my coffin on full moons. They have uh, like six or seven of those underworld movies. Why don't you go watch all of those to see if That's you know stupid. what the answer is? No offense to anybody, but I didn't like them. <laughs> I, I remember watching the trailer for. Underworld 25, and it had the return <laughs> of uh, that. She's super smoking hot, that English girl. It was okay. Like I saw, I saw the first one, maybe the second one too. It was like all right. But Either way, she's a uh, Kate Beckinsale. That's who's that hot British chick. Oh, I always mixed her up with the lady from the Mummy. You remember the Mummy movies? I forget who that lady was. Rachel Weisz. But uh, Kate okay. Beckinsale. I remember the scene in the trailer. It was just like blatantly. Kate in the Beckinsale trailer. is cute. Yeah. She's super hot. She like she. Her husband was the guy who created those or directed those movies. And like I guess uh-huh. they just got a divorce, and now she's like dating a nineteen-year-old guy. Could you imagine? Because she's like nearly forty-something or whatever. But she mm-hmm. still looks, like, super hot. Not that 40-year-olds don't look hot. They actually do look super hot. But she's, like, you know, you'd think she's, like, in her mid-30s. 
but she's like uh in that trailer for one of the underworld movies she's like it's just a blatant shot from behind her as she's uh-huh. crawling in a vent in like latex you see her butt so it's just her huge butt on screen i was like hey this is a pretty good movie i was like <laughs> That's in the theater going, hey, this must be a masterpiece that they're selling it by having her in a spandex-covered ass crawling through a vent. Perfect. Like, People I bet who you the, invented spandex pants and yoga pants are... It genius. was actually like, I think it was like leather spandex or, you know, some sort of tight-fitting. Either way, it was masterpiece. The, ge- the director's right. a genius. He just was like, yes. He anyway, so... The, whoever did the uh, cinematography for that scene. How we got to Kate Beckinsale, who knows? But uh, so anyway, uh, um, Anna Paquin turns to a werewolf and then she kills these. People I, I like the it. scene of them ripping off their skin. I thought it was cool. Yeah, see, that was another scene with all their tits hanging out, like just nudity. And I, and I like, always hey. take a campy usage of uh, Marilyn Manson in a movie. You know. What do you mean? Oh right, yes, yes, that is very two thousand seven. Yeah, it was like this is as like this is as like uh, back to the nineties throwback as we can get. I like it. It's and good. Marilyn Marilyn Manson said that he thinks that Columbine was what ruined his career. Yeah, uh, I think it was nine eleven that ruined his career, but I could be wrong because I, I think people would, weren't scared of guys dressed up in costumes when they have. He's not supposed to be scary. He's just a fun, cool guy. But that's what he care. wanted. If you ever seen the MTV Awards, it was hilarious when he was on stage. Yeah, but that's saw... MTV. That's MTV. I re- I'll never forget on TRL one time with that stupid Carson Daly guy. Yeah, I one time that. they had Marilyn Manson come on during like the Antichrist Superstar time period or whatever, and like they had this whole stupid setup with like candles and all this kind of stuff. And oh, I remember okay. he was just like, nah, and like, whatever. And then they came back after commercial break, and it was all normal. Oh, yeah, no, he's a very intelligent guy. I, he's if just you ever a hear, cool guy. He's just if you ever hear him years. talk, like, during uh, Bowling for Columbine, like, it's a, yeah, he's, he's a, a very, genius. He's a very... Like, he's, uh, okay. All right. Although he's a, he's a let's not go that let's not go that far. Um, he's no, a he's a genius in the sense that he's just like okay, fine. Maybe he's not a genius. He's well thought out. He's very smart. He's a he's a smart, funny, talented guy, and yeah, he obviously like he's like just having fun. Like I remember, they were they brought on some concerned mother on TRL to oh, sort Jesus. of argue with him. And he was like, you know, uh, she was like, what have you done for these kids? What have you done? What, what? And he's like, I thought I'd give them the music. And then she was like, no, but you're not. Like, she wanted some fucking, like, she, like, she's surprised. Like, I'm sure in her time when she was listening to Elvis, you know, her parents were like, what the fuck are you listening to this guy shaking his balls around on stage? You know what I mean? You're so it's stupid. like, Marilyn Manson, like, if you look past beyond the gimmick, like, he's actually a smart guy. And obviously he's using... He's making music that like people will feel something to. You know? I haven't heard his new album yet, but I heard it's good. Yeah, I'm sure it's terrible. So anyway, hey. so speaking of Manson, he is used in this film. It is very 2007. It's it makes me feel even weirder that it's such you know such an older film. Uh, moving on to the next story, uh, what did you, you thought the transformation of the werewolf looks good? I like the werewolf. Yeah, I liked uh, when they were pulling their skin off. It was cool. I like the look of the werewolf. It's a little stiff for me. The face. Uh, of the werewolf because it, it was obviously a puppet. Obviously, there's only you can only do that with a puppet or CGI. But thankfully, they went with yeah. an actual puppet. And aesthetically, it looked good. But I thought the puppet's movements were super stiff. And I was like, I don't Ooh. think there was any CGI in this movie. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was. Uh, it even Thanks had good God. opening credits with like you know false like comic book stuff happening in the beginning. I liked that yeah. stuff. I liked. Um, um, I liked uh, the old man. Um, storyline a lot. Where yeah, that is sound? um that's that uh very good actor. Um, what the hell is his name? Brian Cox. He was also in the X Men films. He I hate the sound of wheezing. Oh my god, does it gross me out? Yeah. Uh, he had a ni- had a nice little twist in it where he was actually the bus driver. I don't understand that what the storyline was with the bus driver with the kids. He because- basically got paid off by the family to kill their disturbed children. Yeah, but I don't think that's what the case was. I think he was supposed to just give them candy and not bring him out in public and then bring him no, back but i guess you're, to was he supposed to kill them yeah so the kids did the job for him like they were all like mentally uh they were like fucked up or kids so right the parents paid this guy to like drive it into a quarry so he did and um now he's all fucked up because of it it's so funny that the bus was there, and then nobody actually investigated saw the bus in there. It's very strange. Well, look right? at this the bus town. They got werewolves and demon pumpkins and all this stuff. Like, they have bigger problems than bus crashes. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of the 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 kids? The 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 uh, the joke played on the little mentally. Oh, the mentally Ronda. Mentally. I liked Ronda a lot. 
Hey, the, buddy. The, the, the idiot savant girl that knew everything about Halloween. Okay. Why'd like, you like if I was so her much? age, I would have had a crush on her if I was like a 14-year-old kid. Something tells me you still have a crush on her. But I thought it was an in- <laughs> I thought it was a cute little story. I thought it was nice. Like I, I smelled that they were going to pull a prank on her halfway down the uh, elevator. I like that. That kid must have been a really good actor, the one that was on the elevator with her. He had to fake yeah. that he was scared. It was really well done. I liked that one. Um, it's almost funny that you want to see more of the stuff happening in the film. Do you know? Like, I, yeah. I wanted to see more shit of that, the kids. Um, I that like little, that they uh, died. Yeah, I like that too. Uh, they didn't show it on screen because I guess that would probably be NC-17 or something stupid. But I like that. I like the girl just basically told him. I thought it was a little bit of overreaction for her to let them die. But, you know, whatever it is. Well, a maybe Halloween she didn't film. believe them. It could have been that too. Uh, I, liked, I, I I never got the impression that she killed them. I got the impression that she didn't believe that they were being serious. I assume all those zombies were people that have been killed by those group of zombies. So uh, I thought that was pretty neat. Why uh why uh me- the way that they're framing mentally ill children as murderers when they're dead is very offensive to me. And I like I like that Mr. Wilkins is not only not only is he a killer like he poisons people and chops their heads off with shovels and shit. But also, he dresses up like a vampire and bites people. It's like, wow, yeah, he's a like, disturbed guy. Yeah, because he, obviously he alludes earlier. He goes, I got a date tonight, so I can't, you know. I but he, what I he like is. how multi-layered his killing tactics are. I, th- you know? I think his story was my favorite one. The he Mr. would get Wilkins along with the kid one. from that uh, movie we just saw with the vampire in the ghetto uh, that's like a disturbed kid. What the hell was that? Oh, uh, tr- the Transfiguration. Yeah, Transfiguration. Him and that guy would get along. In the ghetto, huh? Why do you call it the ghetto? Is because it wasn't white people? What a racist. No, because it was like... Legit. Very racist. Listen in, to In like the guy. projects. It was in the projects. A dog fucker on a racist hosting your favorite podcast, people. <laughs> um, w- w- what were things that didn't work for you with this film? Um... I mean, I thought it was really good. I, I thought it was very really good. I think problems. It seems it like campy. a very. It was a nice streamlined sort of horror film. It felt like a. It felt like a it real was very classic and campy and family right. friendly. It's very. It has like disturbing stuff in it, but it was. It still felt like nice and family friendly for a horror film. I really think they could have gotten more viewers for this film had they not had all the tits in the movie. And listen, I love tits in movies, but they could have been like a real classic, like playing it on TV every night. Had they just yeah, like but, I mean, cut how out. many tits are there? What do we see? Like a porn for two seconds? What else? And then the women getting naked in the woods, turning into werewolves? Like that's okay, a lot of tits. Okay, but that's not really their tits because it's a skin suit they're wearing. Oh, okay, all right. Rationalize so it's that. It's like an outfit. Rationalize that with a soccer mom uh, who brings her kids to this movie by accident. Why would a soccer mom bring her kid to see a, a, a movie of death? They don't know. Look, it's like sold with that little Sam character on the front of it. You know, it looks like a cartoony kid movie. Um, I love, and I love that whole thing with him and Mr. Krieg or whatever the old man. Yeah. Where and then I like he leaves after he eats chocolate. I love that. Yeah, because Mr. Uh, the whole point is that I guess if you don't show respect to Halloween, that creatures from it come after you and try but to you kill you. You know what stinks is that he dies at the end anyway. I didn't want. Well, him to he die. killed. He was gonna kill those kids, but you know. No, Technically. but sure, he killed them, but like, no, I'm saying he learned the lesson of respecting Halloween. Like, he even gave candy to the trick-or-treaters. Like, they should have left it at that. He learned his lesson. Well, that makes sense for a horror f- It's It makes sense for a horror film where the character thinks he's going to get away with whatever he did. and then. Yeah, no, it. but I like the idea that he could survive. and Maybe the zombies could come hang out with him but not kill him. I really he didn't don't know. Deserve I, to die. He learned his lesson. I really don't know how much a family can pay you to kill their children. Like I don't know how much a bump in money you'd want. Listen, if somebody wanted to give me, how would you get away with that anyway? If you're the bus driver, like and you if have I had a five dollar raise at work, I would kill someone for it. <laughs> like I mean, how do you get away with that? Seriously, how do you get away with? I guess he did get Yo, away with it because he was fucking werewolves. They don't care about this. I guess they he did get away with it. Problems. He was he was living there. I mean, he every. Had a, Every Halloween, there's, like, people dressed like vampires t- killing you and werewolves and, like, little demon pumpkins. You know, the, 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 like, a car crash is the least of their problems. It would be nice to see a trick-or-treat, too. Uh, I think it's cool. If you but were I- going to kill your kid, assuming you had a kid, how much would you pay somebody to do it? I'd be willing to pay, like, 50 bucks. <laughs> I mean, you could do that, I guess. You can hire a transient. You know what as I mean? A, as a Jew, I would try to keep the cost as low as possible to get the <laughs> most bang for my buck. Very I racist. would give them, uh, you know, 
I would tell them to invest their money to me, and they would get twice as much back in ten years. Very and then good. I would have them killed, so that way I could keep their money. Okay, let's see. Warner Brothers shelved Michael Doherty's Trick or Treat for far too long. Oh, so I think it was in like um, limbo before they actually released the film. Okay. Like Trick or Treat when it first came out, I think that it was probably made and they just held on to it for a long time before they released it. Really? So that's probably why. I, yeah, I don't, they do that with movies. I don't know what what the case is, but um, okay, here we go. The film was originally slated to be released. Yeah, I remember hearing about this that it was supposed to be released in October two thousand seven for a Halloween release. Warner Brothers, without explanation or reason, pulled the film from the schedule, and no rescheduled date was announced. One reason might have been that Saw four had been came out the same time. Oh, so that's what oh, happened. Jesus. So uh, it was what a does that have to do with mm, Saw Four? No, because it came out at the same time, so they didn't want direct competition. Sure, from Saw Four was like a stupid one, right? Saw Four was the worst Saw of all time. No, I think the sixth one was the worst one. Which was is it the one no. that had like basically nothing? It was Saw Four for me. That was the one with the cop who was following them around. And yeah, there's uh, one that's like just straight up like no. No jigsaw, nothing happens. It's five, I think. Fuck. Five, I think, actually was an improvement, and then six was. I don't remember what six was. Was that the last one? Six? No, seven. And now they just made. Oh, you're right. Eighth. Was, was the eighth good? It's. Did it come out? Wasn't it supposed to come out this year? It's supposed to come know. out Didn't this it year. Come out? No, it's coming out. I think near Halloween. Oh my god! There's a Saw movie coming out. Oh my god! Anyway, it's called Jigsaw. And it's also an interesting way to... Uh, Sawan is the pronunciation of Sam Hain. You know, it's written Sam Hain. You're supposed to call it yeah. Sawan. So, uh, I, I didn't hear about... I heard that about, like, twice this year. So, it's interesting. Anyway, there's a lot of trivia for this movie. You want to see the trivia? Oh, this which is coming I out in a week, up. by the way. Saw seven, uh, 8 is coming out in, like, a week. Great. Let's go see it. And let's talk about it. Okay. Nah, I don't... <laughs> that movie had a, a lot of violence in it, saw, and I don't. I just agree don't with understand it. what the point of making the new one is. Like they wrap money. It up. It's, it's making done. money, Danny. It's no, money. Sure, they'll but it's they'll done. find a way. If it was a movie about sandwiches, they'd call it. Slaw. I watched all Get of it? them. It's done. Slaw? Like they fixed it. It's it's. There's no reason. All right, very good. Uh, so no negative real things with this film. It's a pretty good looking film. I think it's uh, it, it should be a Halloween classic. I mean, it's fun. It's how is it's Toby clean. Bell in this? I'm sorry. I'm, okay, I'm done with the because uh, they the, probably show footage of him that he recorded before the other movies. You know what I mean? Right. I guess that's how it's gonna be. That's that's Anyways, just how so it tr- is. Trick or treat. Trick or treat. Uh, very good movie. What was, I what enjoyed was your it a favorite, lot. Favorite uh, story in there? Uh, Principal Wilkin, the guy, uh, the killer father one. I wish there was the more of him in it. Burying the kid, I like. Yeah, that and one I kind of felt bad that he was uh, killed by the other lady. I do like the old man, but I like. I think Principal yeah. Wilkin would be my second favorite. Brian Cox is a great actor. Probably the the old man is probably no. Actually, I think the kids uh, with the prank is the second best. Um, mm-hmm. The third one would be Mr. Krieg, and the fourth one would be the Coven of Werewolves. And I assume the fifth one will be the guy with his stupid girlfriend. But either way, it's a, it's a, it's they're interconnected really well. It's shot beautifully. It looks great. It feels like a classic sort of '90s movie. Mm-hmm. Even better, it feels actually almost like an '80s movie. Where the imagine the, the the credits just had that porn that that guy was watching. <laughs> that was it, and that was supposed to teach children the horror of sex when they get older. Right. Uh, I like the movie a lot. Uh, I was going to give it an eight. But uh, there's some simplicity in some of the stories, so I'd give it a seven. But it's a really good movie. It's fun. It's like a, a no-brainer sort of enjoyable movie. Seven out of what? Seven out of ten. Um, biting a young lady, and uh, she ends up just throwing you from a tree when you break your legs. Okay. That wasn't a very good rating, but go ahead. I'm going to give this, I like your rating, eight. Eight out of ten. Uh, you You know... A, a footsie pajama demon pumpkin is trying to kill you with a uh, blade in a chocolate bar and then you give him candy and he leaves you alone and with that Danny what's the final word chocolate the horror deconstruction